Man, oh man, how interesting is this? I tell you what, folks, such is the state of American journalism today that when the old standbys, the drive by media, report factually accurate and true stories about a ranking Democrat, people on our side immediately concoct conspiracy theories to explain it rather than just accept it for what it is. It just can't be what it is. But I don't care where you, you go to the Washington Post, you go to the New York Times, you go to Ron Fournier, you go to Reuters, and I am telling you they are slitting Mrs. Clinton's political throat. They are going for the carotid artery. On this, in fact, some are even resorting to calling the Clinton Family Foundation the Clinton Crime Family Foundation in order to illustrate exactly what's going on. Other people are starting to discuss the possibility of RICO trials and the organizing, um, the organized uh, crime statute to go after somebody with a RICO. And again, such is the state of, of American journalism that when all of this is happening, Washington Post, New York Times, Reuters, Ron Fournier, when we're getting true and accurate and no holds barred stories on Mrs. Clinton and Bill Clinton and their phony fraudulent foundation, people on our side are suspicious. There has to be something that we don't see to explain this because it can't be what it is. There has to be more to it. And I have been collecting theories all day long. I think it's, I think it's fascinating. I, I just, I am, I am, I'm blown away by it. Anyway, greetings, 800-282, 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. Uh, great to have you here Thursday already. Fastest three hours in media. Some of the theories that I am hearing, well, you know, they're just trying to get this out of the way so that it'll be smooth sailing after Mrs. Clinton and her husband withstand this. They're, they're in fact throwing the kitchen sink out there. And if Mrs. Clinton can survive this, then it's smooth sailing and we in the media can say that we've done our job, that we didn't show any favoritism or bias. Others are saying, no, 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 no. They want her gone. They have never wanted Mrs. Clinton. They've supported her because she seemed like the uh, presumptive nominee, and if it comes down to Mrs. Clinton and a Republican, it's no contest. And so even if they have to swallow hard, they're going to support her. Uh, but now there's a chance to get rid of her. What they really have never wanted her in the first place, goes the theory. What they really want is the Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren. They really want her in the drive-by media. And so this is the first step toward forcing Mrs. Clinton out. Uh, there are other theories that uh, that I have heard bandied about that are variations on, on those two themes. But everybody has a theory. Nobody is, is taking the news stories at face value and saying, wow, they're really going after Hillary. <laughs> it's, such is the state of American journalism. Nobody believes it. Nobody, everybody, thinks there, everybody thinks there has to be an ulterior motive. Okay, let's just get started in case some of this is Greek to you. You don't know what I'm talking I don't mean to insult Greeks there, but I mean, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just sit tight. Oh, let's, let's add something else to this. While the story of the Clintons and their foundation and selling influence and enabling the sale of uranium to the Ruskies, while the story was breaking, and everybody, I'm talking about cable news everywhere, was totally devoted to it, all of a sudden, we were treated to a news story. Two al-Qaeda hostages accidentally killed in a U.S. strike. Obama today offered an emotional apology for the accidental killing of two hostages held by al-Qaeda, one of them American, in a U.S. government counterterrorism operation in January. So you see, we had a drone attack against some terrorists in January. Two Americans were killed. They announce it today. 
right in the middle of the heat on the reporting of the fraud going on at the Clinton Family Foundation. So that's another theory, that the White House is trying to save Hillary by deflecting the coverage by Obama going out, taking responsibility and apologizing for the death of two Americans that we now learn happened in January. They're just announcing it today. So the conspiracy theories are alive and they're on fire. Here is what we're talking about. Let's uh, first with Michael Walsh. This is from uh, PJMedia.com. And his theory is that the media is begging Hillary to get out of the race before they really have to hurt her. His theory that all of these stories about the foundation and the fraud and the selling of influence while she was Secretary of State can be explained by the media saying, look, at this is a tip of the iceberg, Bill and Hillary, and we don't want to report what else we've got. If you don't get out and get out now, we're going to have no choice and we're going to really have to hurt you. It's really damaging what we've got. We've tried to hold this out as long as we can. We've held back. We've tried to cover other things, but we've reached critical mass and we can't cover this stuff up anymore. We can't keep it secret. So we've here's 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 the first here's the first dump. And if if you stay in. Oh, my God, we can't promise this could end up destroying you. And we really don't want to destroy. That's his theory. The media sending a message, get out now while we can still help you. You get out now and we will make sure there are no more stories. Hillary Clinton's family charities are refiling at least five annual tax returns after a Reuters review found errors in how they reported donations from governments. And they said they may audit other Clinton Foundation returns in case of other errors. The foundation and its listed donors have been under intense scrutiny in recent weeks. Republican critics say the foundation makes Clinton vulnerable to undue influence. Her campaign team calls these claims absurd conspiracy theories. The errors made by the charities, the Clinton charities, generally take the form of underreporting or overreporting by millions of dollars, donations from foreign governments, or in other instances, omitting to break out government donations entirely when reporting revenue. When is the last time, and I know it's happened, but when is the last time you have heard of two people becoming ridiculously, fabulously wealthy via a charity? Most charities are set up to do good for the so-called beneficiaries. And we were in New York last night, Catherine and I, we had a table of Marine Corps law enforcement uh, foundation Bowl at the Waldorf area. They have a 99% pass-through. Every dollar donated, 99 cents gets to the children of Marines killed in action. It's a charity that sets up college scholarships for the kids of Marines killed in action, and sometimes other servicemen. And last night was their annual big ball, 20th anniversary last night. Some charities have a 78% pass-through, some charity 80%. Uh, leukemia lymphomas around 95, 96%. The Clinton Foundation, it looks like all the money coming in goes to Bill and Hillary. Honest to God, it, it does look to the lion's share of what comes in goes to them. And the donations take the form of payments for speeches or policy directed. It's incredible. And the media is reporting all of this. This is the kind of stuff the media used to cover up. And when it leaked out, blame Republicans for being focused on things that don't matter. That's why people on our side don't quite know what to do with this. They've never seen this kind of bloodletting before. The drive-by media aimed at any Democrat, much less Clinton, certainly walked in here today practically unable to speak. He was so blown away by what he's reading here. He can't believe he's never seen this kind of throat slitting by the drive-by media aimed at any Democrat. He can't recall it. Now, we could probably, if we think back, we could probably think of examples of this. But he, the, the point is, this is so, I mean, it is so destructive. 
and at the darlings of the party. I went back and actually looked. You know, the first story on this about the Clinton Family Foundation and it, it's, it, it being a slush fund, it started in August of 2013. If the truth be known, the New York Times actually led the way on all of this. They had a very long and detailed article, the Clinton Family Slush Fund Foundation, way back in August of 2013. It was called Unease at Clinton Foundation over Finances and Ambitions. And we spoke about it at length when it came out in August of 2013. But like everybody else back then, we didn't expect it to go any further than that. It was just a one-time story, get it out of the way, clear the decks, as one of the theories today goes. Clears the decks. Uh, Media says we covered it. Hillary remains unscathed and marches on to the campaign. And another way of looking at this, too, uh, you might say, but Rush, if you're a student of this program, especially, you would say, but Rush, but Rush. You've always told us that in news stories like this, if it doesn't reach the low information voter, if it doesn't reach TMZ, if it doesn't reach Yahoo News, If it doesn't reach any of the news sources that the low information crowd uh, sees, it isn't going to matter. Nobody's going to know about it. And you would be right, except in this case, I don't think the low information crowd is the audience. I have always said, ladies and gentlemen, that one of the big problems with the drive-by media is they do not connect with their audience. And the reason is, you and I are not their audience. When you get right down to brass tacks, I mean, how can CNN still be on the air with no audience? How can MSNBC have been on the air with no audience? I mean, the old days, they're gone, kaput. Something else has tried, but they stay. And they double down on what they're doing that's losing audience. Now, they're losing audience in the general population, the general public, but... Just as is the case with this story, the audience is other journalists. The audience is the establishment of both parties inside the Beltway, all the way up and down the New York, Washington, Boston corridor. This news is not intended yet for the low information voter. If it were intended for the low-information voter, it would be cast and written, crafted in a different way. This is specifically, this stuff is being written, reported, positioned for other journalists. This is to get everybody in the drive-by media up to speed on what the theme of the day is, what the narrative, of, uh, as we've heard, what the narrative, what, what, the, what, the, what the, now the narrative. There's a template, what it is. And because it's in so many places, the point is being drilled home that it's serious. So the fact that it might not trickle down, as they say, to the low information voter does not discount this. So you can arguably say, if Michael Walsh at PJ Media is right, and that the media is begging Hillary to get out And the only reason they would do that, by the way, is if they had somebody else they like either as much or more. And they do. Elizabeth Warren. They would much prefer Elizabeth Warren to Hillary. Some of them might even prefer uh, Martin O'Malley to, uh, to, to Hillary. Remember I made a joke, the Clinton campaign spokesman for the 2016 race, this time no surprises. <laughs> That's up in smoke. <laughs> I'm telling you, go back to 2008 and now this year, and there is somebody, there is somebody that does not want this woman to be president on the Democrat side of the aisle. It's either somebody or a series of somebodies, but this was supposed to be smooth sailing again, right? We were back here to Coronation 2. This was going to be hers. It was her turn. It was her time. This was ultimate payback. Payback one was going to be 2008, but lo and behold, a better option presented himself. Barack Hussein, oh, also known as the one. 
The theory went, ah, there's a lot of sympathy, people feeling bad. The party had promised Hillary, and then they pulled a the rug out from them. So 2016, the Republicans are a non-factor. The party's in a little bit of disarray. Ideal time. Get Hillary in there. Get her out of the way. Get her elected. Get her president. Pay her off. Somebody doesn't want that to happen. You sit tight. The details of this are juicy, my friends. And I'd be interested in your theories, too. On Because I know. I, I know that those of you who are up to speed on it and those of you who are about to learn will not just sit there and accept this at face value. You will not say, well, the Times came across some information about the foundation and they're reporting it. You will not say that. You will have your own theory to explain it. Because this kind of reporting on Democrats just does not happen. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it, so I'm going to grab a call. Jeff, Iowa City, Iowa, you're first today. Great to have you on the EIB Network, sir. Hello. Thanks, Rush. Uh, getting right to the point. Elizabeth Warren, I just don't see, has any sort of charisma like Obama did. I think there's got to be another reason that the media is doing this to Hillary. You're having don't a hard you? time with it. Why, why, why are you having oh, a hard uh, time? Because there's always sort of a, a, a rug that's pulled underneath you. Every time we think that the liberal media is going one way, then they completely flip it around. I was sitting here on hold, and the thing that I thought of was, do you think it's possible that uh, – since the Republicans are pulling back on going after Hillary full force, that they're going to put this up in such a way that it looks like the, the media is getting down on Hillary, so the Republicans will come back and argue, and then they'll say the poor woman is getting beat up. Like, there's got to be a rope-a-dope somewhere. Yeah, see, a this, is my, this, is my, this is my point. I, 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 th- that, you're, that's a first, that all of this is aimed at rope-a-doping the Republicans. You see, folks, Jeff, I cannot thank you enough. I cannot tell you how helpful your call is. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We have been so tra- – we're like mice, gerbils running around the wheel. It never stops. We're so convinced – everything the media does is designed to negatively impact the Republicans. It's a rope-a-dope, whatever it is. It's designed to expose the Republicans as buffoons, mean-spirited extremists, sexist bigots, racist, homophobes, you name it. My mind had not gone in that direction on this. I'll tell you where my mind is going. Who knows what's in Hillary's emails? Because all of this is in those emails. Why do you think she had a private email server? To keep it from everybody else. She wanted her own server, not the State Department server, because she she and Bill... There's no doubt they're out selling access to a future presidency is what they are doing here. They are selling access. They are making commitments, policy commitments in exchange for huge money that they are converting to personal use. These people have been obsessed. Do not doubt me on this. I know many of you were not alive or old enough to pay attention back in the in the early 90s with the Whitewater scandal. Everybody misunderstands what that was all about. That was the Clintons just trying to get rich by cutting corners, which is what they thought everybody who got rich did. Getting rich did not involve hard work and long preparation and expertise. It involved networking and contacts and who did you know and what could they do for you? What favors could they do in exchange for what you could return or give them back? Whitewater was a get-rich-quick scheme. The Clintons have never had any money individually, and they were obsessed by that. In politics, they're running around people who have more money than they can shake a stick at. They didn't have anything. That's what Mrs. Clinton talks about being broke when they left the White House. I'm sure in her mind they were compared to the people they run with. The people they run with own three private jets, own islands. Make a phone call and there's a bevy of women waiting in the living room when you arrive where you're going to your private island. You think Bill Clinton wouldn't like to have something like that himself? They're salivating over this stuff. So this is this is no question that they've been salivating for the longest time about becoming filthy, filthy rich. And she has been selling. They have both been, they set up that family foundation as a means of collecting big money from foreign entities. And, and the New York Times story today is all about one of the most 
egregious and outrageous sales of influence that Mrs. Clinton has made. It involves uranium. I'll get to it in just a second. I should have gotten that out of the way in the first segment, but I wanted to focus on the media angle. If if you're still frustrated and wondering specifically what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, but stick with me. I'll get to it here in just a second. I really think that when these things start to happen, you always have to look at who benefits. And they, the question, who benefits from Mrs. Clinton swirling? And not, forget Republicans. I don't think this has a thing to do with the Republicans yet. But I totally understand those of you who do. People on our side have PTSD, shell shock. And using my old phrase, intelligence guided by experience. In the past, the media has existed for one reason, destroy us. The Democrat Party has existed for one reason, destroy us. And I have warned you, I have guided you, I have trained you to look at news in such a way as to see the angle in it that destroys us. And many of you are doing that in this case, and I do not blame you, but I don't think that's what's happening here yet. I think the regime is behind these leaks. I think the regime, Valerie Jarrett, they know what's on that server of Hillary's. They knew what she was doing, just like they withheld what they knew about Petraeus until it was time to deal with him. There's no love lost between these two. Make no mistake about it. And I think in the pit of his stomach, the last thing Obama wants is the Clintons back in the White House toying around with his agenda. And maybe trying to tweak it, change it, get rid of it, whatever, for them to take credit for whatever comes next. Because believe me, both Obama and the Clintons are obsessed with getting credit for what they do. And the last thing Obama wants, he doesn't even worry about the Republicans right now. Obama thinks the Republicans may not even exist. He's got the Republicans in the palm of his hand. He doesn't have to worry about them. The Republicans call him every day and say, what can we do? What can we do? How can we help? So he's not worried about them. But he damn well doesn't want these Clinton, this Clinton pair coming in and unraveling his agenda. And he doesn't trust them. And he likes Elizabeth Warren a lot more. Probably can control her a lot more because she might even think that she owes him more than the Clintons for whatever her political fortunes in the future might hold. And in the dark horse out there is this O'Malley guy. Do not discount this guy. And I'll tell you something else. It's not a dark horse, but this Blasio guy, de Blasio, purposely distancing himself from Hillary, you you do not know how mad she is about that. She's seething mad about this. I was in New York last night. There's scuttlebutt. This guy wants to run for the presidency. De Blasio. So anyway, if there's any leaking going on here, and I'm not predicting it, I don't, No, I am prepared to take this on face value. I am prepared to accept the notion, by the way, just so you know, you might think I'm naive and you might think that I'm letting my hopefulness get in the way of uh, objectivity here. But I really think it's entirely possible that Michael Walsh is right here, that the media is going for the throat here in an effort to save the Clintons, essentially. Look, because his, his theory, again, is that they are begging Hillary to get out before they have no choice but then to totally destroy the Clintons. Meaning they know even more about what's gone on with all of this stuff. The foundation, the whatever that we just have the tip of the iceberg. And they're saying, okay, please, Bill and Hillary, we love you. Please get out of this now before we're going to have no choice and report the rest of what we know. And then you're cooked. You leave Ron Fournier today. I mean, this, he's in deep pain over this. He's loved the Clinton since the 80s in Arkansas. So I, I it could well be nothing more than that. It, it could be Elizabeth Warren. It uh, could be a number of things. Again, I look, I don't mean to be repetitive. I'm just fascinated by how A plus B can never equal C in our minds when it involves the media that there's some unspoken conspiracy theory to explain this that we haven't yet figured out. Um, here's the New York Times story. This this and the Reuters story, and the Washington Post, too, they're, they're equally as devastating. The New York Times article 
4,337 words. Now, the average op-ed column in a newspaper is 750 words, just to give you something uh, to compare it. 88 paragraphs. It is one of the most amazing articles I have ever read in the New York Times. It is one of the most unexpected articles I have ever read in the New York Times. It, in 4,337, actually it doesn't require all those words to do this. It exposes the Clintons as the most shameless influence peddlers in the history of the world to the point of treason, folks. To the point of criminality. It's 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 unprecedented for the New York Times to go after any Democrat like in my lifetime or memory. There may be one that I've forgotten, but none as prominent as are the Clintons. And I'll tell you something else about this New York Times story. Because it's from the New York Times, it completely destroys Hillary's claims that these charges are all just from the vast right-wing conspiracy. You know, Hillary is out there saying, yeah, well, those Republicans, that's all they've got to talk about is me, you know? That's all they're doing is talking. It's just, it's just more the vast right-wing conspiracy. We were prepared for it, you know. We were... The Republicans haven't said 5% of what is in this story in the New York Times. And the New York Times, unless the Schulzbergers have been kidnapped and brainwashed, are not part of the vast right-wing conspiracy. Last time I looked, that little pinch was every much the lib that any of the rest of them in the drive-by media are. Let me take a brief time out. Details next. Don't go away. Anyway, to the phones, because I promise this is Jay in East Liverpool, Ohio. I'm glad you waited, sir, and welcome. Hey, Russ. Uh, I heard your question. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to take a stab at it. Sure. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. The biggest fear of any presidential campaign is an October surprise, right? I mean, that's what we always hear about. Most of the time they turn out, you know, they fizzle out and turn out to be nothing. But a legitimate October surprise, and by legitimate I mean something where there's there's uh, a smoking gun or uh, something that that it gives it legitimacy that, that people will look at it and say, yeah, you know what, this kind of fits with what I know about the candidate. Um, and I think that's that's the big fear here, is that there's some a smoking gun, a blue dress, if you will, that somebody's sitting on waiting until just the right moment, because that's the other key with the good October surprise is it's well-timed. And the problem is that the people don't know what's in her emails. And everybody thinks that, that the people who are most interested in those emails are the Republicans and Trey Gowdy. But I really think the people who are most interested are the ones that Hillary are going, is going to be hitting up for tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars for a campaign and the media. I mean, once once she's the candidate, she and uh, the media are basically going to have a wedding ceremony. They're going to be joined at the hip. Wait a second now. Wait a minute now. You're off. You you got two theories here, or is this all part of one theory? No, it's part of one theory. My okay, hold theory... it. Now, don't go any further. Let me okay. see if I understand. I'm going to see if I'm up to speed with you right now. Right. So, so you think the media is nervous? about supporting Hillary not knowing what those emails contain because they don't want to go all in for somebody that's going to be blown away by an October surprise containing this kind of stuff. They don't well, want to I mean, make that mistake. So they're trying to find out what's in these emails now before they commit to her. Right, and, right. And, and, and it, this, it, so they're essentially now getting the October surprise out of the way a year and a half early. I think their hope is is to draw the fire. It's just like in the old war movies where somebody where there's a standoff and somebody throws a rock out into the middle of, of no man's land to draw the fire. So I think this is the New York Times and, and, and the others, this is their version of throwing that rock out there to see where the fire comes from, to see who's holding what. Because there who knows where these emails went to? Who knows how many different aides saw different emails? Who knows what's out there? And and you know, we look at it and say, well, you know, what, what might be, uh, you know, what could we use 
uh, to hurt Hillary. Well, that, you think that people are going to be asked to contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to campaign on thinking the same thing and the people in the media? Uh, uh, the way I look at it. Okay, so like, wait, wait. There's one thing I miss. I think I now get it. You think that that the October surprise is being done now to take her out now? Not necessarily. I think they're wanting to see if somebody's holding something because they're going to be tempted. If you if you've got a damning email and you see all this other stuff coming out and the media focusing on all this, would there not be a temptation to rather than hold your fire to October? Would there not be a temptation to go ahead and go public with it now? And I think they, they need to know, they need to know, can this horse make it across the finish line? Who, again, I'm losing, who is they? And, well, I think both the media and the big big money donors, because the media... But they're finding out. It, wait, wait a minute now, they're finding out. They're, 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 this is enough. I don't think they know the extent of what's out there. So you think they this is an effort to find out everything else that's in there? Yeah, well, it's just like okay. Look, if 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 they're getting married, basically, once once she's once she's the candidate, they they are in a, a partnership or a marriage. If 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 you're considering ha- inviting somebody to get in bed with you, you want to know who else they've been in bed with. They want to know who else Hillary's been in bed with. This is their version of a you know an STD test for Hillary. Find out where else has she been. What what else might change her going forward? Because we need to know now, either to try to fix it you know, to, to deal with it or to cut her loose and find somebody else. I don't, I don't think the media has any loyalty to the Clintons necessarily. They have a lead, their loyalty is with the Democrat Party. So if they don't, I don't think they really care that much about who's the candidate as long as it's somebody who can beat the Republican. Uh, that is true. And, and I've, I've thought since 2008 that the media has not been all in for Hillary. Bill's a different story. Bill... They love Bill. Oh, man. I mean, Nina Burley said she'd give Bill a Lewinsky just for keeping abortion legal. And a Time Magazine reporter, the women in the drive-bys love Clinton. They're still dreaming, you know, that it was him and not Juanita Broderick. Uh, them and not Juanita Broderick or Paula Jones. They're jealous of these people. Hillary's a different matter. She's the ice queen. You know, she's Nurse Ratchet. Well, okay, interesting theory. This is part of the vetting process, in other words. They're letting this stuff out. The donors, seeing if they can withstand the heat, find out what else is in there. Do the October surprise now, and if uh, if she can't make it, find out now. Dump her and go somewhere else. Uh, which, or let me, before you go, do you think, this is yes or no, do you think that this is part of a process to help her get elected? I think it's a process to find out whether or not she's going to make it across the finish line in the end. They want to know now whether this horse can cross the finish line. And if she is, if she can't, Interesting then Interesting theory that they don't want to do anything to help her do that. They want to find out, in your theory, if she can do it on her own. They're not interested in covering anything up for her, according to your theory. They don't want to help her cross the finish line. They're throwing the stuff out there. In other words, the proverbial excrement is being thrown up against the wall, and everybody's watching to see what sticks. And if too much of it sticks, it's bye-bye, sayonara, Hillary, and hello, Elizabeth Warren, or whoever else. All right, cool. Back after this.